Welcome to the Inot Shell. And I'm glad to be with you in this evening. Uh, while we are uh, trying to wrap up the event of, uh, in a nutshell, seven birthday. It has been a remarkable month. The last three weeks, uh, we've been addressing a lot of issues pertaining to South Sudan, uh, progress, stability, prosperity, unity, peace, security, economic prosperity, social stability, political stability, and all these aspects that are very important for our country to move on, to progress, prosper, and, uh, you know, have a real great place among the nation of the world. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about four major things that if we work on them really good and really hard, our country will be one of the great uh, nation in the world. The first being media, uh, press, and journalism, and how it could be free uh, without uh, uh, any censorship in terms of uh, uh, being a responsible media also that is reflecting uh, what is happening in the society, what is happening in the country, what is happening in the, in the, uh, across the nation. So for it to address a lot of uh, uh, national issues, the state locals that are pertaining to the stability of our nation. Uh, it is very important that we, we have uh, a free media and a media that is uh, uh, reporting without fears, that is uh, reporting with responsibility and also with uh, uh, accountability and you know, in a way that uh, it does add constructively to the building of the nation and the state. So as we know all around the world that uh, media uh, is like an eye to, to the whole nation. It does uh, with diversity of uh, many journalists and media professionals, they bring up a lot of uh, issues that are happening across the nations from uh, many dimensions in terms of uh, social uh, issues, uh, political issues, economic issues and cultural uh, issues, all these aspects. So you cannot deny, you cannot deny or minimize the role of media in, 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 in the cycle of uh, human progress and human, uh, uh, you know, development. Uh, so, we, 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 we have been uh, uh, facing a lot uh, since our independence uh, in terms of the relationship between the media and the authority or the government, uh, which uh, the relationship also reached some kind of clash point and uh, that is due to some kind of misunderstanding sometimes uh, about the rule of media and also, uh, you know, uh, people think that media, when it reports wrongdoing and some kind of bias in the system and uh, underperforming in uh, 
uh, underperformance in the government. People seem, people in the government seem to see that as uh, as as insult or exposure to weakness, exposure to opposition, and like um, uh, you know, trying to make people against the government and uh, against the official, which is not really true most of the time because if there is problem within the nation in many uh, dimensions, security, uh, corruptions, uh, underperformance, and uh, all this, the media actually, when it, when it report this kind of uh, bias and uh, shortcoming, it means to uh, uh, wake the attention of the official or point their attention to, uh, to those kind of uh, shortcomings. So for them to be aware. Sometimes officials are very busy and they could uh, bypass or override those kind of uh, shortcoming unintentionally. So if you, when, when, when you, uh, in the first day in your office, you, you see like uh, media reporting on TV, on news, uh, uh, newspapers, on internet, uh, reporting on some kind of uh, shortcoming problems here and there, is actually, this is a really, really good really good because it is it depends on the way on the way the official uh, consider those kind of reports those reports could be a red flag and also uh, a warning and information to the official that something is happening right there something is happening uh, right here and it need their attention they need to act as soon as possible to fix that, you know. So media is very, very important, and its freedom must be guaranteed. Its freedom also must be protected, because it tells us this is the only tools or method that uh, we know that something is happening in our society, something is happening in our uh, uh, government, something is happening in our nation, injustice, uh, uh, you know, marginalization and uh, problem there and here. These are all good to be reported because on that kind of report, official will act to fix those kind of uh, those kind of uh, problems. So I wish the perception of uh, our official or our politician uh, have to share in uh, seeing media and journalists as enemies. They are not. I think if you, if you come to the reality, you will see that somebody that is telling you that something is wrong with you, or something is wrong with your car, something is wrong with your uh, clothes, uh, you know, it's just like the mirror. When you are going out, out in the in the morning, going to work or going to uh, some social gathering, you know, uh, you look at yourself at the mirror because basically you cannot see yourself in face to face sometimes, yeah, because unless you have another mirror. So when you see like you have something on your face, but you are not aware of that, so you look at the mirror. And then you see that there was some kind of uh, stuff that could uh, really uh, make you, you know. Uh, uh, so, in, uh, in in that in that manner, this is how media actually reflects uh, the what is happening in society, in your uh, uh, department, administration, uh, grievances, uh, com 
complaints of uh, employees and all this. So let us encourage, let us encourage freedom of the media. It is all good for us. And it, it, we will be aware of what is going on in our uh, society uh, as large, and I mean at large, and uh, it is good that uh, a country with a free media, a country with respected media, respected journalists, and uh, that is the uh, sign of a civilized society, sign of civilized nation. So I encourage our official in South Sudan to uh, embrace that uh, so our country also can uh, grow and can prosper and can be one of a uh, thriving democracy in the world. Uh, the second topic that I'm going to talk about is uh, the reform, which are constitutional reform and institutional reform. So those kind of reform, you know, we, uh, uh, we've been addressing a lot in many books of the nutshell. So in, uh, in these three books, uh, which is, uh, you will see most of, uh, most of these books uh, ha have actually uh, focused on uh, addressing reforms, uh, constitutional reforms, in institutional reforms, governance reforms, judiciary, all these things. And uh, we, we focus it on them in a way that, uh, in two ways, that they actually have to be functional, they have to be uh, performing well, I mean with a high performance, they have to be constructed in a way that they are serving the higher or the highest interest of the nation and the country. And they must be independent. You know, so uh, if we have independent institutions and we have independent constitutional uh, system, you know we will have justice. We will have accountability. We will have a nation that is formed on order and law. So look at that. In terms of all of our rights are protected and guaranteed. All our duties are formulated, set, and each one of us know them very well. What are your duties and your rights? So in this this is the, the reality of any country. And that is the big difference that most of the countries of the world are really different. So if you see some countries with some thriving nation, happy nation, pro prosperous and uh, growing free, um, and you will see that behind that kind of dynamics or uh, uh, realities of freedom, prosperity, and happiness, and you will see that there is basically a strong, fair, good constitutional system. So that guarantees the right of everyone in the nation, a right of citizen. So you will be uh, working on the street, dignified, no fear, no intimidation. The laws, the constitutions has set clear 
right, clear boundaries, clear duties, clear order. So there is no confusion in that. So you will see even the citizen, you, you will be a real human. I mean, he will be free, happy, and uh, thinking freely, generating great ideas uh, without fears, without... Uh, and you will see, mostly in those kind of nations, uh, they are mentally healthy and stable. Because uh, if you grow out of fears, you grow out of intimidation, you grow out of injustice, you grow without injustice, you know, you know, a human is actually, uh, have to be human with certain, in certain environment. So we all know that, and we've been lacking those kind of fundamentals in back then. So that's why we opted for uh, uh, New Sudan or uh, South Sudan. So our expectation about South Sudan is to be completely different. It's a country where freedom, liberties, civil liberties, rights, dignity, and uh, all these kind of great lives, aspect and fundamental, must be available. You see, must be completely uh, different from the past that we used to be. So, this is uh, this is one of the most important things. That's why we are struggling. We are writing that we uh, we agree that uh, let us cr create a great country, a great country where we are all free where we are all respected, where we are all dignified, where we are all thriving and prospering, where we are all have rights and freedom guarantee. So this is for all of us. It's not for single individual. It is for all of us as a nation. And I believe this is the, uh, the desire, the dream of every human ar ar around the world. So if you see people are running from these countries to other, it's just, simply it's just uh, this kind of difference. So some countries they offer uh, great life, freedom, uh, liberties, uh, and, uh, and all these kind of great things that uh, every human is really looking for. So South Sudan, we actually, as I know, we are a great nation that cherish freedoms, cherish, uh, uh, I mean, freedom of ideas, freedom of by speech, freedom of being yourself, and we grow there. We know that very well that uh, we are, uh, uh, we, we do love freedom. We do love being respected, being dignified. And all our cultural, tribal culture really encourage that, you know. So, uh, it is great that uh, we envision our country, envision our life as a free nation, as an independent nation, where every single individual is enjoying great life, having freedom, having uh, dignity, respect, having uh, job security, protections, having health care. I mean, our leaders, as I say before, when you enter the, the, the competition of leadership with others, is you enter with an agenda that you want to provide a better, a better agenda, a better life standard to your citizen, 
to your people. And that is actually uh, the objective of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of any leader. That in, in, in 10 years, you want to see South Sudanese are enjoying great life, well educated, have health care, their freedom are, uh, are protected, their rights are protected, and they, uh, they have better economic standard, and they are free, you know, under the law. So uh, those are some kind of uh, constitutional and institutional reform that we've been advocating in these books, and we are still working on that until we make sure that South Sudanese and South Sudan is heading and is heading to be a great country. The other uh, chapter is institutional reform. Institutional reforms, if we, 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 if we, we want uh, our country and nation to be functioning well, that means that each institution have to perform well and have to be set on great foundation. That will deliver great resolve at the end. So if we see educational uh, institutions, that means that we need to set those institutions with uh, a great substance, great structure. I mean, the substance that is being uh, teach to, uh, uh, to a student, whether they are in primary, or they are in uh, middle school, high school, universities, and colleges. We make sure that substance is great, practical, not outdated. It is relevant to the world standard technology, and it is effective and efficient in changing our society for better. So when you, when you, when you, when you have graduates, those graduates will be performing with high quality, they will be effective, they will be efficient. Doctors that will be able to treat citizens, cure, and all this with a high standard. Engineers that will be, will really build, you know, all kinds of systems in, in engineering technology, civil engineers, architecture, and all this. So nurses, uh, lawyers. So this is a reflection of having a great substance and instruction. I mean by structure, which is the uh, infrastructure. So investing in education, investing in, in education in institution is actually the best investment a country and a nation can pursue. So if you want to see South Sudan in the next 10, 15 years uh, uh, competing with great nations all around the world, you must prepare for now. You must know exactly what these primary kids or high school kids are really uh, consuming as educational substance. I mean, in terms of uh, critical thinking, in terms of uh, technology, uh, technical skills, in terms of uh, professional skills. So you design something that is really going to uh, uh, reflect at the end to a great graduate. This is one of important uh, things. So we have to build institutions that are really uh, thriving, functioning, and have great uh, service standards. And we must actually make sure that the infrastructure is well designed and is equipped, or they are equipped, with all these kind of uh, 
tools in and uh, electricity, clean water, you know, create an environment of learning, of education that is going to uh, bring or uh, uh, deliver, you know, uh, a great graduate, great future professionals that will uh, transform civil uh, services, uh, that will transform uh, businesses, private sector, that will transform uh, public sector, that will lead the country in a great, uh, in a great way. So these things are really uh, uh, products of uh, great institutions. So some people think that when people call for uh, in institutional reform, maybe it's just only for a single person. That is not true. All of us, we have a stake in fixing South Sudan. All of us, we have a stake in creating great institutions. All of us have a stake in having a fair, just, and uh, uh, inclusive constitutional system. So it is not just only for a single person. Those who are against this are the real enemies of South Sudanese. And I know uh, we have enemies. Enemies sometimes that uh, could be, could, uh, you know, sometimes we could be also enemies of ourselves. Uh, since we have like uh, 70, uh, 75 or something like this illiter illiteracy, uh, which means that uh, uh, the, the standard of uh, uh, critical thinking, uh, analytical uh, skills and uh, are low. So, or maybe sometimes uh, they are confused, there are none uh, right there. So uh, this is not going to be an excuse in the long run because we, we have to avoid a lot of social problem, a lot of political problem, a lot of economic problem. It is the rule of leadership and rule of intellectual to do the best they can to transform the society, to educate the society to direct the society. And this is why I say one of the rule of the media is that media has a very critical role in uh, transforming society. So creating a public opinion that is positive, that is creative, that is, uh, you know, uh, constructive in terms of, uh, in, 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 in Political, political thought in terms of economic uh, uh, behaviors, you know, uh, you know, uh, in terms of cultural and, 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 uh, and, and, and nation building. Media is very important. And this is actually why we encourage not just only to have a one TV. I, I, I will encourage that we have uh, uh, private TV, privatization of the of the media, so the media can uh, uh, really perform its role in a great manner. You know, so there is a lot in uh, a lot to learn from uh, from movies, from uh, uh, debates, show. All these are tools for educating society and transforming society. So it is really uh, very important that we expand the media. Since we have a lot of adults that uh, cannot go back to school by now, or they are uh, too old, but they will learn through media. They will learn through uh, uh, TV, I mean TV shows. They will learn from a lot of media I mean, a lot of things that, uh, a lot of programs that are being offered by the, by the media. 
So our official, they don't have to fear, fear the media. They don't have to. They can just set a standard. They set a standard, they set orders, they set conditions that are not really too aggressive or too, res I mean, restrict the, 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 the freedom of media in reporting and in, in, in doing this kind of transformation. So this is the rule of, uh, of government. And when the laws are fair, each one of us will feel that this law is, makes sense. It is rational and it is fair. And also in the opposite way, it could not. Uh, we, we will admit that this reporting of this, general, of this generalist is abusive, is unconstructive, and should be uh, punished in this way and that way. So uh, this is one thing that uh, so Sudan need to uh, very, uh, very, very serious about it, uh, and uh, uh, and and put it into actions. So uh, this uh, this is really very important that if you are going to change or transform the mindset of the nation especially a nation that is just coming from domination, a nation that just coming from uh, servitude and long term of uh, abuse, marginalization, and uh, misleading, miseducation, and all these things. So as a liberator, you, have, you will need to put your new nation into new paths because you already did the physical liberation, you liberated the land, and we are independent. But the job is not done. I mean, it's a process. It's a very long-term process. So you start liberating the mindset of people and uh, liberate it from the residue and the bias of the old system and misleading and all this. You set the new South Sudanese person. How is going? What is really if you want to form a nation from this tribe, then you must have a substance, a substance, a, 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 a unifier substance that is bringing all these people together. If you see they are fighting right now, or they, each one of us has a, 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 a thought of a colonialism and tribalism, it's just because there is a lack of national substance that is bringing these people together. And this is the rule of uh, leadership. And the leadership need to envision if they are really serious about building a prosperous and, u and united nation. Not to, not to monopolize it. Because what we see is that the, the core leadership is trying to stay in power by monopolizing the divisions and the, the, the the tribal uh, factors, which is not good. So you cannot uh, just change in one night from liberator to manipulator or to another oppressor. So just because you want to stay in power. So uh, you can stay in power also positively by doing great things, by continuing liberating your people in a great way. So a, a liberator will not, you know, you have, no, uh, you have no rival if you're doing the right thing to your people. Uh, you have no rival, but your rival will be actually a negative person. I mean, an enemy. But if you, you've been uh, waging this war for 22 years, fighting for your people, you will know it, that you are a liberator. So what you need to do is to continue your job, continue your objective by liberating them, taking them from poverty, from these poor conditions, from this situation of, uh, of infighting, from this uh, hatred, from this economic problem. Take them to a higher standard of everything. Economic prosperity, unity, stability, peace, security. And I am sure that you will stay in power 
as long as you're providing those, uh, those kind of uh, objectives, which are actually the healthy uh, thing to do. Uh, so I believe we, we, will, uh, we will be great, and I know that each nation has uh, a point of, uh, you know, uh, weakness in some times. But I do believe in the strength of South Sudanese that we will overcome all this in far in our right way from today. Let us all do it, not just on our leaders. Each one of us has a responsibility and a role to do. Thank you so much.